Hello, I'm Scott Hall, Psychic Medium, and today I'm going to talk about a post I made that, that uh, got a lot of response about being a sensitive kid, um, which I was and am. I'm just a kid in an adult body, still sensitive. Um, I talked about how when, uh, even if someone like teased me in a, in a, in a fun way, just, just to kind of mess with me, that it would have great impact on me. Not always, but most of the time. <laughs> most of the time it did. And, um, and that's just the kind of kid I was. So I, um, I grew up in an environment where um, there was some jabbing and stuff going on that, that wasn't, you know, sarcasm was used a lot, um, or uh, uh, there was hidden agendas. And so words didn't always mean what, what you said. So if someone said something, Playful. I also wouldn't know exactly the meaning of it right away. I wouldn't know exactly where the person was coming from. So I had to deal with that. And and then now I think, well, what's going on now is I've learned, especially in the last four years of doing the spiritual work and doing, um, you know, giving psychic readings and really feeling other people's energy and feeling other people's um, empathic ability and empathically feeling their feelings. I mean, it's, I've learned so much just from being in the presence of other people. And I can't say that I'm less sensitive. I, I actually thought that was the case. I thought that was going to be the case, rather. I thought that, um, that I would be okay, be better about being around people that were maybe a little bit, you know, jokey that liked to jab or liked to use sarcasm. And sarcasm, as most of you probably know at this point, it's it really always has a jab. It always has a kind of a spike to it, and um, it's kind of hard to deliver sarcasm without a soft blow, you know, without some sort of little stick there. Hey, Regina, um, and so I, but I thought I was going to be able to just kind of like handle it better. I just didn't understand at the beginning of my spiritual awakening. Um, and then I found out that really I would remain a sensitive man. I would just go, I was just going to always be sensitive. It came to that realization. And it's nice to have a partner um, who recognizes that in me and appreciates my sensitivity. And by the way, Janet and I will be on live tomorrow at 1, is it one thirty, honey? One thirty, I think. She's busy, but I think it's one thirty. Um, tomorrow afternoon, and we'll talk about something. I'm not sure what yet, but um, but having Janet to really appreciate my sensitivity made me realize, oh, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to become the tough guy. And I always talk about like Clint Eastwood and Blondie, and that's what I what I was growing up to be. I mean, what what we were taught, um, what we were what men were brainwashed to be was like a Blondie on the good, the bad, and the ugly, and that is just you know cold. Cold and doesn't talk much. I had the tall part. That's all I had. I never had the rest of it. I always talked a lot, and um, I was shy at some points, but um, I couldn't be that guy. I couldn't be the tough guy. And the great thing is, I don't have to be. So that's been a real relief. But then, what about the jabbing? What about people that that jab? How how does that affect me now? Well, I'm able to change my perception of it because perception is everything. We are, our consciousness is everything. Our consciousness makes everything. I'm, each person has their own perception of the whole world, including everything someone does and every, everything that's said. We have our own perception of that. And so my perception is what has changed. So if someone um, is giving me loving jabs, you know, just like, hey, it's God, wow, you forgot to do that or whatever. That's funny how you do that or, or you know, something playful. And I know that they're just coming from the heart because I can feel it now. I know I can. That's the one thing is I'm able to distinguish what what the the objective is of the person and if it's just love and fun and even if they say something wrong I'm like oh, let's, let's say I'm extra sensitive that day I can just say something to that person say hey you know that that kind of got me but but it's all good that way but what about the people that you know I still encounter people that aren't don't have good intentions and how does that feel well I can on a good day I'm, I'm going to preface that with on a good day I can say, oh, um, ah, that person's really in pain and it's really not about me. And if I did something wrong, you know, I can apologize for it. But, 
but you know, if I'm talking about a situation where I really didn't do anything wrong, someone's just jabbing at me because they're not comfortable, um, I can look at it that way and see the bigger picture and like they're not happy. I'm not gonna lie, it's not like I don't feel it. I'm extremely sensitive, extremely empathic, so yes, I feel it. I can just say, that's theirs and not, not mine and kind of give it back to them, right? Um, on a bad day, forget it. I'm gonna be upset and it's just gonna affect me. I, I know that, I'm not perfect. But um, I wanna talk about a situation that happened to me the other day um, and it brings up something that Muji, a guy, a, a, a yogi who I've been following, who uh, a spiritual teacher, it's M-O-O-J-I, I love him. And uh, I even saw him have a bad day when he was dealing with someone, because you know people aren't perfect. And, and I watched how he handled his bad day, and he was just kind of in a bad mood. He didn't say anything wrong, but boy, he was irritated by someone who was really troublesome. So that was trouble, I should say. Someone that was very troubled and kind of pushing it back on him and acting like a victim and you know, like you, you know, I should be learning this and I'm not. And you know, so it was cool to watch someone that that I rank very high spiritually that was still having trouble. So that's you know, you can't be perfect. But um, back to what happened to me. Well, so one thing that Muji said is that the. Um, the, pre the power of presence, you can't deny that, the power of presence. And what, what he was talking about is the power of having someone in your presence who doesn't have good vibes, or the power of someone that's in your presence that has good vibes. You can come up with all these things that you're gonna do in the likelihood that you'll get your jabs or whatever, and I can look at the person and see that they're in pain and send them love, well, yeah, 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 right. When they're, when they're actually in your presence, it's a big deal, it, it lays heavy. And so the other day, I'm going to call him Bob. Uh, the other day, I, I uh, met Bob, and Bob was had conflicting energy, and I could just see it in him. It just looked like a fight was happening. And he had asked me about something, so I said, "It looks like kind of a fight's going on." And and lo and behold, he, he was very offended by that. He was very offended by that, and. Um, I didn't really expect that, but I, and, and once again, I was in a position where I was asked to say this, so I was just like kind of dumbfounded and the presence of that fighting energy came over me and I was like, wow, I was just like caught in a war that I didn't intend to go to. So here I was, I had all these, you know, like, like I can perceive that the person's in pain and blah, 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 yeah, yeah, whatever. Like all that goes out the door when you're in the presence of someone that's really in pain um, because they also tend to attack. And so I felt attacked. There was a lot of judgment being coming towards me and uh, I felt it all. And I just, you know, had to get away. And that's what I did. <laughs> I, just, I just had to get away. I was realized I'm not going to win this battle. I didn't even want to be in a battle. I didn't want to be jabbed at. I didn't want to be poked or prodded. I just was here to enjoy people and uh, I wasn't. So, so I really thought that really impacted me and I thought about, well, okay, what did that mean? What did that mean to me? What, you know, here I am the sensitive guy, I'm going out there and I had just made my, 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 um, uh, goal of 2020 is to meet new people every week and that and and where I met Bob was uh, was doing one of those things to meet new people that I've been out doing and um, I was thinking wow what went wrong well I put myself in a situation where I was around some people that could potentially be that way and that's just a choice I need to make in the future about would do I, I need to be more careful or can I just like say some affirmations about I really want people who come to me to, or who I meet, who I, who I walk into a room and they're in the room, I want to meet the people who are more in vibrational alignment with me. I can do that. But the fact of the matter is, sometimes just, you know, it's like God wants us to, or the universe wants us to have a little lesson of, of what the power of presence is. The power of the presence of someone who is in trouble, who doesn't feel good, who is unhappy, how that feels in your space. And so one of the things I've realized is like, I got to keep the self care up. I, I'm still the sensitive guy, but I'm not going to sit at home. I realized also, so someone shared on my post and it was so great that she shared this. She said that she stays home because 
That's where she feels safe. And I've been staying home, but I didn't think it was because I feel safe. I just thought I just need to get, get out more. I'm really an outgoing person in reality. And why should I stay home? But, but no, there must have been this subconscious thing about staying home to feel safe. Because here I go, I go out, and of course I'm going to meet some people that I just don't jive with, right? And that's just part of life. But it doesn't mean I should go home. It doesn't mean I should stay home. No, I know it doesn't mean that. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to be, um, you know, blondie and the good, bad, the ugly and, and say whatever, you know, um, and just ignore the person. I, I'm going to feel other people's feelings. That's just part of it. How I handle it is is really important. Um, but But I'm, you know, being dead honest and saying I don't. I really don't want to be around people like Bob. I, I want Bob to get help. I'm obviously not the person to do so, but I want Bob to get help. But until he does get help, I don't want to be around a person like Bob because I am so damn sensitive. I really am. So uh, let's see. Uh, I want to read what some people have to say. Regina said, I think that it's a good way to take care of yourself. It's hard to love the difficult people. <laughs> yes, it is. And and I have loved ones in my life, you know, some. So that that are they're having difficulty and but those it's different because it's a commitment you love them and they're your family and you know you you take care of them but um yeah it it's hard but it's worth it in the end for loved ones at least <laughs> um, um Michelle said hi what kind of readings do you do please please do you do playing cards um, I do intuitive readings um, you can go to Scott Hall Psychic. Dot com and, and go to services and see what I do. And I do intuitive readings where I'll sit down with people and get information from your spirit guides and, and help you make decisions. Um, need, if you need affirmation, whatever, information from the spirit guides will help you with, with your life, basically. Help you empower your life. Be self-empowered. I mean, uh, yeah, self-empowered. That's what I meant. Um, let's see what else we got here. Hello, first time here. Would love a message if spirit comes through. Waited a long time. <laughs> okay, so we, I did not intend to do readings here. I'm not. I have good boundaries about that. I didn't. I didn't intend to do readings, so I'm not doing readings here. So if you came just for readings, I'm sorry about that. But but just but watch and and see if you don't get something out of it. You know that maybe you needed. Maybe spirit wanted you to watch this to learn about being a sensitive person. I don't know. And if not, I'm glad you came anyway. Observe, don't absorb. Oh, I like that one. Regina said, "Observe, don't absorb." That's really good. That's what I do. When I'm working, when I'm working, I think, you know, the pe- person's energy comes in and I tell them, I'm going to feel what you're feeling, but don't feel bad because it doesn't go, you know, I'm just, I know it. I go, okay, that's what the person's feeling. Move on. I don't need to, f- you know, have it all in my body and everything. That's really good. Um, Ashley, yes. And people can physically drain you. Yeah. If you let them. Yes. And that's the, you know, so if you take in all that energy and feel bad, it can drain you. And, and like when I got home and I thought about my interaction with Bob, um, I, I did, and by the way, I made up that name, of course. Um, I, I, um, you know, it really affected me. I mean, I had to talk it out. And uh, so it's, it can drain you for sure. And Jesus says, I love that name. My, my man, nice to see you again. Still keeping up the good work. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, understandable, Ashley says. Thank you. Appreciate everyone. So, so tell me if, you know, you can... Questions about being sensitive or tell me what, what's going on with you when, when you had someone jab you. I mean, I remember I was just so darn sensitive when I was little. I still am, but I think I just, the difference is I'm still just as sensitive, but I, I'm able to differentiate someone's objective. Like, I, you know, hidden objectives, it's hidden little, I'm going to get you, or maybe not so hidden, someone's out to get you kind of thing. That, that was, I didn't differentiate when I was a kid. I just, every just thing seemed like, oh, like a teacher, even if teach. I remember a teacher was teasing me about something. My face turned bright red and he meant it in a nice way. He liked me, but I was just mortified. So <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Um, any questions? Uh, I guess think of what, what I've got coming up. Um, so I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the stuff I've got coming up. I'm about to schedule Ave. Uh, another Ave channeling. Um, Ave is my extraterrestrial friend. I think it's going to be uh, what's what, February, March, for I don't know when it is. I will put it up though. That's coming soon, and um, I don't even know why I mentioned when it's coming soon. But anyway, I will put it up there. I've also got a gig uh, March eighth at the Pullman, and for those of you that are in Atlanta, at um, that's in um, Kirkwood, and Kirkwood is a cool little 
town, a little cool section close to Decatur. And uh, I'm playing there for brunch on March 8th. And uh, for those of you that didn't know, I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm in a band and I do solo stuff. This will be a solo gig, so come on out to that. And I'm trying to think if anything else is going on. Nope, nothing that I know of. So I guess that's about it. Um, thanks, y'all. I uh, hope that was helpful. And have a good rest of your evening. Bye.